Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys my second devlog update on the grid building system I am working on, which targets top-down 2D Godot games. So to take a quick look at where I was last time and how things have changed, uh, let's take a look at the screenshot for the devlog one. So you can see here that uh, previously you could basically place the house wherever you wanted to, and that has been resolved now because there are build rules added into the system. So in order to place something into your game world, you have to actually meet the rule requirements. So for instance, one rule you have the option of using is the no collision rule, which you would probably put on most things, uh, making sure that wherever you are trying to locate the building, that there are no collisions underneath. So going along with that, you can also see that the indicators have been broken into a tile by tile indicator. So you can see exactly which tiles there are a collision on and which ones there aren't. So if I was to press my build key right now, you'll see in the build log in the bottom right hand corner uh, that it has failed placement. So there are actually two rules that this house is set up for in order to require placement. One is, of course, the collision check. And then the second one is you have to have enough materials to spend in order to build the structure. So for each placeable object, you choose which rule sets you actually want to implement. So of course, some objects, you might not need to have materials in order to place it into the world. And there could be, in theory, an object that doesn't have any collision. So to resolve these issues, let me go ahead and collect the brown wood in the scene in order to have enough materials to uh, build our house. So anywhere that the collision will allow us to, I can now press the build key once again, and this time it actually places the house into the game world. Now, of course, uh, because that house is there now, it's going to cause collisions if I try to place on top of it. So the new collisions blocks other objects from being able to be created in those areas. So I'm trying to set up the rule system to be as flexible as possible and allowing you to create your own rules and to choose which ones you actually need for the circumstances of the game. So let's take a look at the Godot side of things and how you might change the rules on your house so that you have to add in extra resources in order to build a house object. So here we have my farmhouse scene, and you'll notice that the node's pretty much standard, except for this extra one that's been added on called placeable. So in order for an object to be placeable inside of the game world, it should have a placeable node component attached to it. And if we take a look at the inspector for those placeable objects, you can see that uh, we have a array of building rules. So the code for each rule is of course gonna be wildly different. What you would expect from each rule is that they would be able to return a success or a failed message, depending on whether the rule is passed or failed for allowing an object to be placed in the game world. And so these are the messages you can grab by connecting to the signals on the build system. So for instance, in the bottom right, I have the build log, which does exactly that and outputs it to a rich text field showing what messages we get back from those build rules. So for actually setting up the farmhouse and making it require some stone, let's take a look at the spend materials rule. So inside of the spend materials rule, we set up what materials we want to spend, which is an array of material stacks. So in a material stack, we have the item type. So this points to a resource and the count how much we need to spend to actually place the object. So adding a second material stack to the requirements is just as simple as incrementing the array to a second one. And then we can create a new material stack here. So this is a resource type and we're just embedding it inside of this placeable object. So for the item type, let's grab a material from our project. So I have some materials that are declared as resources. So let's grab material rock and drag it in here. Okay. So if I expand the rock materials, you can see uh, it has a display name, a texture, and a stack maximum. Okay, so now we just need to say how many rocks we require to build the house. Let's set that at three. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save our farmhouse scene so it updates, and then let's enter the game and see if it actually requires our three rocks. So first off, I'll go ahead and collect the two wood as we normally would have in order to build the house. Let's hit build and pick an area which should be buildable. So all the tiles are green. You can see that there's no collisions. So I hit enter and we get a failed placement, not enough materials, rocks needed three. So that means we have to go mine some rocks. So I'll go over to one of my rock nodes over here and swing the pickaxe a few times. 
Okay, so we get three rocks. Let's go ahead and place it into the scene now. Enter, and we consume the resources, as you can see in the top of the left, and the building gets placed into the scene. So that's basically where I'm at right now with the system. A couple things I'd like to add in right now are additional rules. For instance, being able to check adjacent tiles uh, to wherever we're placing an object and then requiring the adjacent tiles also be cleared. For instance, we would want the area in front of a house to be cleared so that we can actually enter the house. I'd also like to add in a default interface for selecting different buildable objects that are available inside of your game. Uh, so that you can actually switch between not just the house, but other things you might want to put in. So if we're just talking in terms of like a farming simulator game, that could be things like placing seeds on the ground or building, let's just say, a chest. Now, of course, the intent is that whatever I would build there would be a totally optional system just to have something out of the box. So if you liked this video and you want to follow me for more updates, I'm going to be posting on Ko-Fi, Patreon, and itch.io whenever I have more updates to share, and eventually I'll be releasing it on each of those platforms as well. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching this video to the end, and I will see you guys in my future game development content.